he's on the walking simulator machine. That, uh-huh. Again, like Ian pointed out, oh, yeah. they wouldn't put him on if they actually didn't think he had any chance of walking again. It's just a cruel, it's just a cruel thing. <laughs> 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 this is the nurse. Let's, Look at what you're missing, motherfucker. <laughs> this is what you get for dangling around and making me faint. Let's take that guy that'll never walk again and drag him across a treadmill. That'll be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the hopeful look on his face, asshole. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if this suddenly became a true crime podcast, you'd notice. I'm your host, No Illusions. Unfortunately, Heath won't be able to join us. He's still nursing that New Year's hangover, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Geared up and ready for a story of... Well, not hope, a story. Yeah, not not a story. I'm (laughs) ready for a movie. (laughs) Okay. Well, movie implies movement, but yeah, yeah. we're ready for a thing. (laughs) We're ready for a thing. We've also got a special guest masochist joining us today. I'm really excited to welcome him here. Ian Harris is a comedian, director, mixed martial arts trainer, and guy whose six-word biography has a twist fucking ending. (laughs) Did not see mixed martial arts trainer coming. So, Ian, welcome to God Awful Movies, sir. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yes, that that does that does throw a twist in people. Uh, <laughs> they go, wait. So does that mean you f- do you get in fights on stage? How does this work? <laughs> I'm still waiting for the day that somebody rushes me and I get to choke them out on stage and go viral. <laughs> we can make this happen, Ian. I'll rush you. You can choke me out. I'll shit myself. I shit myself at a moment's notice, Ian. We can go viral together. It's it, it's, it's hilarious because I've talked about this so many times that if it ever does happen, people are going to be like staged. <laughs> so I'm like, I might as well just stage it because they're going to say it's staged anyway. But yeah. I mean, we, yeah, with the material I do, I'm surprised somebody's rushed me yet. Yeah. So <laughs> you just have to try harder. All right. Yeah, exactly. So tell us, Ian, what will we be breaking down today? Yes. The the uh, the epic film that I'm sure everyone's heard of, Badge of Faith, <laughs> which, by, by the way, I watched it with with my daughter. It's 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 a film about a a, a true story, apparently, except for probably all the, the God shit. <laughs> it's it's a true story about a cop who. uh who gets what? Who gets paralyzed and and eventually partially recovers? I don't know. It's, <laughs> yes, it's, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's including kind of the, the I don't know is a great summary <laughs> of this movie. <laughs> it's, 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 it was my daughter was like, "This is the worst movie I've ever seen." I'm like, "I know." Uh-huh. Why did you make me watch this? I'm like, "You didn't have to sit here." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we get that question a lot, actually. Yeah, that's our company motto. Why did you make me watch this student <laughs> episode in here? Yes. How do I get my hour and a half back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was particularly interesting. But and my my daughter also made another observ- observation. She goes, How come every time these movies they always have southern accents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting how these kind of things only happen in the least educated states. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> All right, so Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the miraculous healing powers of Christ of Nazareth, but you don't want to, like, bother him, (laughs) you will love this movie. This is the, we're going to put this healing up on the fridge, yes we are, of movies. (laughs) Yes, yeah, like it's like God came in and he's like, Jesus, you haven't healed anybody in a long time. He's like, fine, fuck it. Boom. That guy can kind of walk now. I'm done. <laughs> the miracle. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time I'm thinking to myself, dear Jesus, please don't fucking paralyze me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we start there? They always pray at the wrong times on these things. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Please do not let this guy kick me in the back of the head <laughs> and break my spine. Oh, um, yeah. The thing is, is that you got to be damn specific in your prayers. That's that's the problem. You have to think of all the contingencies. He's like, "Fuck! I asked not to be kicked in the nuts." Oh. <laughs> hey, Jesus! I don't know if you mind if you would mind like just taking a moment away from helping the Patriots win the Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> and um, not let this guy kick me in the head. That oh. would be great. All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? For for example, stuff like um. Best worst 
gunshot noises, both real and imagined. <laughs> right? Like there's a moment in this movie where there's supposed to be he's supposed to hear a gunshot, but it's obviously not a gunshot, and it's so obvious like that you can tell what it is. And then later <laughs> there actually is a gunshot, and it's like a fucking 40 millimeter naval gun going off next to us. <laughs> it's but not also like it's clear that they were looking up gun sound effects and they were like, 99 cents. There's got to be something free on <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, 99 cents is actually what they paid their sound recordist. Yeah. <laughs> I, I swear, that when I, that it's got to be the nominee I would give. It, it, it would be the best use of a tin can audio recording. <laughs> because that was, I, I sw- I'm like, are they using the, the camcorder microphone for the audio on this thing? <laughs> like, are they are they really is it is it two tin cans on a string connected to the camera because Jesus should have more money than this. I mean, <laughs> At it's, this point, it's yeah. interesting that he can't miraculously scrounge up a budget for these guys at some point. Yeah. 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 Pr- pray yeah. for a professional sound recording uh, engineer. <laughs> but the one to me that was the funniest shit thing ever was his voice of God. That was the that was the worst voice of God. It was Optimus ever. Prime, Jimmy Buffett God. You talking about that. sweet, sweet Jimmy Buffett God? <laughs> yeah. uh, hey man, um, you know uh, you're kind of messed up right now. And, uh, just you know, kind of kind of think positively. This movie is about a man who is paralyzed from the neck down, and it somehow managed to be badly miked. They're not even moving. He's sitting <laughs> yeah, in a right. bed. That's the whole point. <laughs> yes, and, and, and I, I found it. Fun. I love. I love how they they do. They put in. They they, they love to put in the stuff from the uh, from the doctors that you know that the doctor didn't say like this is impossible. Like she said, wait, you you. He says, well, I said this to the guy. She goes, you talked. <laughs> That's impossible. He's not paralyzed from the neck up. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, like she goes, this is. I must check my notes. This is impossible. It's like I don't think a doctor said that yes. while you're having a conversation with a guy that it's impossible that he spoke after being kicked in the head. And you know, I just like it's just they they love to make up these these wonderful uh, little things that, that that the scientists would have said. Yeah, no, yeah. there's a lot of use of the word impossible from the doctors. Yeah, yeah, yes. See, now I had to do a little research for mine, but I'm going to go with best worst working title. Oh, they had a worst title? Oh, the working title for this film was Kicked by Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if you look it up, no! it was oh, cast God. under Kicked by Grace. <laughs> it was working project on IMDb <laughs> under Kicked by Grace. And you have to imagine it had a Facebook page. And at some point, Someone obviously told this guy and they were like, so uh, we, I don't think we've actually told you the title yet. We were thinking of naming it the thing that happened to you by grace. <laughs> what do you th- No, All right. We'll call it Badge of Faith. Badge of Faith. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> that's a Make a new Facebook page. But, but you, you have to admit, though, that, that 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 would have been a much better country title song. Oh, uh, yeah. Because that sounds like, you know, kicked by grace and stomped by Jesus for, yes. you know, whatever like that. That sounds like, uh, you know, somebody could have uh, Trace Atkins or somebody. I don't know. Somebody could have recorded that. and, and Yeah, and they could have had a little line a dance that went with it. it. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the line dance. Somebody falls on the ground and you stomp them on the head. And, for, <laughs> and then each person comes down and stomps them on the head. And that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> good line dance. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If there's one thing I can say for a movie about a quadriplegic is it's not going anywhere. So we get to take ourselves a break. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the inaction of Badge of Faith. Hello, Officer Lawrence. I'm Dr. Alvin Theist. Hi, Doc. So tell me the truth. Am I ever going to walk again? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm I'm not. No, 100 percent sure. There's no chance you will ever walk again. I'm a doctor, and doctors say stuff like this all the time. Right. Well, I guess we'll just put our trust in the Lord, honey. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. What? Trust in the Lord. You see, God is a myth created by ancient peoples to explain away the things that scared them. I'm a doctor, and we tell people this all the time. You do, that's true. Oh, for sure. I, we just run around telling everyone they won't get better, and, and God is fake. Anyway, enjoy that bed. Uh, you'll be in it forever. Okay, well, thanks, Doc. Achoo! Nothing happens when you die. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with a plot synopsis written on fucking screen. <laughs> Bold choice. I love how they place this paralysis in relationship to Mother's Day. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I have three notes on this opening sentence, right? <laughs> so, it goes, on the day before Mother's Day, that's the opening. We Never any reason for us to know what day this happened. It says, Officer Brian Lawrence was kicked in the face and paralyzed from the neck down. There ever was a show me, don't tell me moment, guys. And then it closes with this amazing line. It changed his life. <laughs> Show me the guy whose life that would not change. I mean, Heath Enright. To, I hate to. I hate okay, to all right. No, job. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the only reason I can think that this like black screen write up proposal of the movie exists is because they didn't trust their audience to take the five minutes of setup that this movie is going to do before they kick him in the neck. Oh, they, yes. They had to draw in the Christian movie audience with a cop being treated like Lucy's football just to make sure they'd stick around. I got, I got to say, Eli, this is how bad you are at sports references. Anybody else's football would have worked there. <laughs> oh, that's right. right? Like, pulls so they, it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this movie definitely had a don't worry, guys, something interesting will eventually happen kind of an opening. Yeah, I, I, wonder, I wonder if, if they uh, you know, the entire thing was we know it's going to suck for most of this movie. So hang on, because at the end, you'll be inspired by what we already told you just happened like that. I think that's that was. the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, what's amazing is that some idiot filmmaker read, you know, the entry on foreshadowing in that blog article about how to make a movie. And he's like foreshadowing. Right. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Tell him what's going to happen. Double the showers. Words what? early. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> well, also, I mean, look, 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 but let's be honest. In hindsight, it seems odd that they put that. But after you watch the movie and obviously we'll, we'll get there. When the movie's over, the opening line is actually more inspirational than what really happened in the movie. I mean, we're talking a, a, a dramatized version of actual events, which we know they always add extra stuff in. And it still was like, oh, oh OK, like, literally those opening lines were more inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. The elevator for pitch for this movie was far more dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we back up to three months earlier. And man, shit, are they going to get their money's worth out of that goddamn drone? <laughs> oh, but they're so, right. they're so bad at that drone. I, I, I wrote in my notes, no. shot note, I got a drone for Christmas. I'm not great at flying it, but I'm trying my best and that's all that matters. <laughs> it's not the worst drone shot we will have in this movie because there's truly an abysmal drone shot near the end. Yes, yes, you're talking about the crowd <laughs> yes, shot, the at the shot at the end. That's amazing. But it's, it, you can literally see the drone like dropping and the guy being like, fuck, I gotta hold my thumb on the thing the whole <laughs> Time. The shadow of the drone on everyone's faces as it goes by. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the moment I love the most. So they had this, what they thought was a really cool idea of having the drone turn along with the car on this 90 degree turn. But in order to make this happen, they have to turn the car at like one mile an hour. <laughs> so super awkward, slow drive so the drone can keep up. Yeah, I think it's, it's so funny because, uh, like I said, I watched this with my daughter and she said something like, do Christians just drive really slow? <laughs> it was something like that. She goes, why are they driving so slow? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now the movie is going to pump fake something happening, right? It'll do this several times. So what we have is we have two cops showing up in an unmarked vehicle. Mm. They get out of the car and there's this huge gang of bikers. And the cop, the the guy cop walks up to the bikers and says, do you guys have the money? Is he crooked? He's a crooked cop, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like they subvert and the guy hands him a big bag of cash and stuff. He goes, there's almost five thousand dollars. But then it turns out that those were Christian bikers that were riding for charity. And he's just give they're giving him the charity money. See, you, you know how you know how I how I how I wasn't fooled, though, because they were white. 
<laughs> That's true. This movie has a very specific type for criminals that it does not. Yes, you're right. They from. sure the fuck do. As soon as oh I saw God. it, I go, I go. These are the good bikers. They, yep. they, because they're white, we want to think they're bad because they're bikers, but because they've got the Lord, they're good white Christian bikers. Oh my! And I'm sorry, but like a charity or not, if there's a situation where some dude's just handing a cop five thousand dollars in right. cash, let's yeah. figure out a different fucking system, right? <laughs> Set up a GoFundMe. Yeah, <laughs> this movie is so racist in the way it portrays criminals. Later in the film, when there's a black physical therapist, I was like, that guy's gonna steal his wheelchair. I know this guy, <laughs> this movie has taught me right. And I got to say, like, yeah, I know that that's supposed to be a twist, but how awesome a movie would this be if he was just a super positive, crooked cop who was like, let me get a high five. All right. Enjoy selling that meth, you guys. Don't sell near any schools. Am I right? I'm just kidding. You sell the kids all you want. Get them young. Am I right? <laughs> oh, no, it would, it would have even been better, though, if, if, if he was crooked. But he was on the take for Jesus. So it was like, yeah, you're selling that mess. <laughs> He's given 10% of that 5,000 to church. <laughs> right. Some of it, 10% goes to church. The rest goes for toys for tots. Get back out on the street with your heroin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So he goes back to the station and we have to show that all the other cops are giving him shit for like not quite being a real cop. I, I, they never really hashed this out, but he's not really a cop. He's the guy who goes to all the schools and does the dare. Uh, presentations. Okay, so I have so many questions. First of all, the, well, he they, got a uniform. <laughs> they appear to be giving him a hard time for not having a cop car, but I don't think that's something within his control, right? <laughs> like he, right. like he, they did a blind pick of cop cars the first day. Well, so it's like, have you ever seen Avatar? They have to climb up the mountain, and the car chooses them. Oh, oh yeah. right. <laughs> also. When they're making fun of him, this actor tries to use air quotes around the words, a real police officer, and it goes ter- I thought this was how he's going to end up paralyzed for a second. He's like, oh, a real police. He's doing little bunny foo-foo. He's got a third hand sprouting out of his chest at one moment. Practically scratches out someone's eyes like the forbidden fist. These were air quotes as bad as they can be. And also, I mean, the, the, the whole thing with the cop car, and you know them, them giving him crap about about like you said he he has this other car, but it's like I feel like that's one of those things where in these bad Christian movies they they feel that they have to keep true to the story, and it's like one of those inside jokes where they're like, yes, well no, it really happened. You see, for some reason he had this. They couldn't explain it, but in reality, his car crashed, so he had to use his Toyota Camry for a couple of weeks, and everyone gave him crap, and it was the funniest thing how everyone gave him crap for using his Toyota Camry. (laughs) We gotta put that in the movie, because that really (laughs) happened, but we don't have time to set it up, so let's just have people giving him shit about the car. It'll be really great, and it'll be what really happened, because we can't lie about it. <laughs> and it, yeah, it'll add realism. Well, we, they do that again when, like, the with the roommate that shows up, and he's like, "Oh, I know this guy," and it's like, "There's no reason for you to know that guy, though." He will right. never don't matter. know that guy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's a lot of that in there, actually. Yeah. So okay, so it, they're giving him shit, and then a call comes in that somebody's going to need to drive their car super fast to catch this bad guy. Oh, <laughs> who's got the best car? Okay, but the guy. He's just driving with driving clubs. He hasn't committed a crime. <laughs> he's, well, he's speeding. They're all chasing the speeder. And you know why? Because driving super fast is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the, the one guy does is just take a different route and cut him off. Yeah. And the guy just stops and gets out. And he's like, you got me. Yeah, right. Because he gets pulled Shucks. over by a not cop car. <laughs> <So right. laughs> he seems at most miffed by his arrest. <laughs> yeah, yep. exactly. It's like, whoa, <laughs> Donny Osmond just uh, drank a little bit too much coffee today and he went on a, <laughs> on a drive. Well, and apparently somebody told this filmmaker that the thing that makes car chases interesting in movies is that there are cars in them. That's really it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just we just uh, over and over again, we cut to another shot of a car by itself on a road and we go like, yeah, he's probably going pretty quickly. I can't <laughs> tell. There's not really any reference but sure he's going fast well they they could they couldn't actually wreck the car because that was the car that got the cameras to the to and from the set and it was actually (laughs) the executive producer's 87 toyota camry (laughs) (laughs) right 
But the key here is that main character cop, I, I don't know if he ever gets a fucking name, but they'll call him Preach several times because apparently he's an annoying preachy guy. Is that what they were calling him? I, I was like, that can't be that can't be real. That That's just too on the nose. Preach? Preach. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, <sighs> kind of ruins the whole, like, it wasn't until I was paralyzed that I accepted Jesus. If everyone was calling you Preach before you were paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Also terrifying that you were a cop and people were like, hmm, what should this police officer's nickname be? How about religious <laughs> authority figure? <laughs> yes. Because uh, the other nickname, harass black guys, was already taken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of which, now so he gets the he gets the bad guy and then he heads off to teach a dare class. Right. Okay. I have a question about what he is teaching this dare class in front of. The entire time he gives his little lecture and he's like, I used to be dyslexic. And the entire time he is projected onto the wall behind him, dare, hello, dyslexia. I just wrote my, yeah, what? I wrote in my notes. Okay, Noah, it's an anagram. Anagram this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, no, I tried. I did try. I couldn't do much with it. I got a yodeler's helix lad or... Hold a leader sexily. That's the one. That's, that's all, the, we know what he was okay. going for. <laughs> that's all I could get from that. I have no fucking clue, man. Well, the, the only, the only thing I could think of is I was like, at some point I was going to just, just harken back to the really old tired joke where I was like, well, maybe when you got kicked in the head, it was dog talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain the voice. It was a cartoon dog ass yeah. voice. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Actually, <laughs> it's like, listen, preach. You need to get up. Ooh, squirrel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to get up because I love you. <laughs> all right. So, he, But he's telling all these kids at the dare class that when he was a kid, they thought he was too dumb to be a cop. But darn it, if his mom didn't believe in him. By the way, his mom won't be a character in this film. We've already talked about Mother's Day. And now he has a whole speech about the, how the only person who believed him is his mom. Again, for that, like, no, no, but my mom was the only person that believed in me reason that Ian has identified, because that's what really happened. Uh, and again, right. in this movie's defense, literally nothing is going to happen of any importance. So I would have finished this film and been like, what about a six minute speech about your dyslexia? Do you want to put that in the movie so we can make that <laughs> sweet, sweet 92 minute mark? <laughs> well, it, it would have been great if God, that, would, that actually would have been great is at the very end. I can't walk, but I can read like a mother. <laughs> God yeah, cures right, my dyslexia. Right. Yeah, he cures the dyslexia. <laughs> 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 All right. So while we're in the dare class, by the way, we're going to meet one of our main characters. It's a, a, a little African-American kid named Washington, right? He is not going to get that name until way later in the movie. I'm going to give it to you now. So, yes, Washington and Preach, they were going for names, and that's what they landed on. <laughs> it, it, it seems like every black guy's always got to be named Washington. <laughs> and he's like, bad, I'm not racist. There's a black guy who's not a criminal in this. There's one black kid who's not a criminal in this movie. So, therefore, it's not a racist movie. But the name is always Washington. I don't know. It's like they watched some 70s sitcom, and, like, now every black guy's named Washington. Well, it's look, it's always an ex-president's last name if it's a good guy, or then it's, it's something like you know, X money or something like uh, right. when it's when it's a bad guy. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was I was going to say after watching these movies for 229 episodes, I'm just grateful the kid got more than one letter because more often than not, they're just <laughs> T W. <laughs> crush. <laughs> so Washington is walking home from school that day when all of a sudden all the bully kids show up to throw crab apples at him. <laughs> right. Which, 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 by the way, we I didn't know they were. Cra I thought they were throwing rocks. What a horrible! It took me till later to realize they were throwing crab apples. I, I was like, they were throwing tennis ball. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> why were they throwing tennis? And I think actually they probably really were throwing tennis balls because they, <laughs> you know, like for because they're like no one will notice that they're actually tennis balls. <laughs> I bet you're right because they weren't throwing crab apples at this kid. Probably you're right. No, that that's probably what they did. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, no, I've seen it in American Gladiators. This is safe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, so they're, they're throwing crab apples at this kid, and then this is when fucking Officer Mall Cop shows up to save him, to run the bullies off. How badly did you guys want him to get out of the car and shoot Washington <laughs> for having a trash can lid that he thought was a gun? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So I thought it was one of those big, new, round guns. The silver, bright silver, round gun. <laughs> 
So, yeah, and the way this fucking scene ends is terrifying, right? Because the cop says, yeah, it looks like you were getting your butt kicked. Let me teach you what to do. And then it shows him sharpening a goddamn stick. And then the scene ends. Yes. Well, dude, I, that's, I, I wrote it down like, what the fuck? And then, <laughs> then, I, then, you, then it reveals later. But it's like, I was like, what, stab them? Yeah, yeah. What, he's, like, he's like he's teaching those kids to make fucking Rambo traps, isn't yeah, he? Right. There is absolutely no doubt that unless you know about crab apple whips, which three people <laughs> know about on the planet, that he's like, yeah. So just fucking, you know, next time they throw a crab apple at you, stab one of them. Just stab them yeah, with this. And- here's you could do this with a spoon too, actually. <laughs> right. and, 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 yeah. So which is what he does. He teaches them. You stick the crab apple on the pointed stick. And then you fucking wing it at him, and it, and it, and he actually calls it a gun. I think it's a crab apple gun or something like that. But it's like, you know what? You know, you know how much longer that takes to pick one up, put it on a stick. Like you've already been pelted in the head thirty times by crab yeah. apples. Like just pick it up and wing it back. It's the, oh, it's a terrible fucking strategy. He has to preload them. We'll, we'll get to it later because <laughs> we we see it in action. But but for now, that's just the training. That's all we get is here. <laughs> here, kids, sharpen a stick with your pocket knife. That'll get him. And then we cut to this weird ass fucking attempt to introduce like, again, this is a something's going to happen pump fake. Right. So the cops driving home and when he gets to his house, he hears what is very clearly a nail gun. Yep. OK, can, can I be honest with you? I didn't even know that. I thought somebody was putting out garbage cans <laughs> like I wrote down, heard a noise. <laughs> Ran to, and I didn't even know it was his house. I'm like, okay, it was so unclear. I hear a clang, clang, yeah. clang. He pulls over. He walks up to a door with the, the doors open and pulls his gun out. Yeah. yeah. Which, again, this makes me terrified that this is one of those, but it really happens, so we have to put it in the movie scene. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because this is not a fun story. It's like, oh, no, let me tell you all this great story. This is a real jape and a jingle. You'll get a giggle out of this. <laughs> so I heard any sudden noise once as I was coming home. <laughs> and almost shot my son. <laughs> so I refuse backup, of course, best idea. Walk in with my sidearm drawn and point it directly at the face of the first person I see. Can you believe it? I should be on the blue collar comedy tour, except I shoot my son. So do you live alone? Oh, no, I got five kids and a wife. And <laughs> yeah, right. So, so, right. Yeah, so there's tons of reason for people to be at my house. Especially since we're doing construction. Yeah, there's, there's so many reasons for me to hear weird noises. Pretty much the in, last thing I should have suspected was gunshots in my home. In the middle of the day. And watching TV. And, 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 and like I said, I didn't even know it was his home. I thought he was, I literally thought he was driving down. He heard a, a garbage can clang and he pulled over and pulled and then a door's open a crack. Let me go into this random house and shoot somebody. Like, yeah, that's what it looked like. And then it was like, oh, hey, son, I almost shot you for for doing construction. <laughs> yeah, though, no, that's exact. And they never explain that this is his house and that that is his son. Right. Like you could you could be forgiven for thinking at this point from this point on that he just made friends with the guy he almost shot. <laughs> right? It is so goddamn confusing the way this is presented. But anyway, so we get that and then we cut to Washington practicing with his improvised crab apple at Laddle. <laughs> yes, an at Laddle. That's exactly what it was. I bet I, you know what? I've been carrying that goddamn word around knowing eventually I need it for so long. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, and next thing we're going to teach you how to gather ants on a stick and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where his older brother character i don't know an older african-american gentleman comes by and he's like hey washington uh just real quick fuck the police like seriously fuck the police (laughs) yeah hey you know i i know that i know that there's no you don't seem to have parents you live on the street and (laughs) you're all apples at people but uh hey if you ever want to sling dope at eight (laughs) yeah what are you doing there man you you practicing with your crab apple at laddle that's cool you want to do crimes instead (laughs) okay i wanted him so bad to be like do you want to do crimes and he's like yeah and then we cut to him in a waiting room surrounded by other nine-year-olds with resumes and suits (laughs) i didn't even look this job up on glassdoor i feel like i should have oh so washington other than your extremely cool uh stereotypical black name 
What are your qualifications for selling crack in Roanoke? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for a self-starter, man. <laughs> so. All right. So meanwhile, back at the house that is. So, so now I can just say, right, like back at his house, he's having dinner with his son and his son's fiance. What I wrote originally in my notes is, meanwhile, back at that house he is investigating, which is his house, question mark. He's having pizza with dot, 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 a young couple, question <laughs> mark. Are they yeah. swingers? I get it. I don't fucking know. You go into a know. house with a gun drawn. You're hoping things will turn into a devil's threesome. They don't. So you just <laughs> eat and find a convenient time after midnight to leave. We've all been there. <laughs> Come on, Ian. Back me up. You're in California. Yes. <laughs> exactly what happens I wrote my notes I'm like what in the holy fuck reason could there possibly be to introduce he has a family in such a weird goddamn way <laughs> well and again we're going to introduce this family by her getting a phone call and being like what's that my dad you can't make the wedding you have bowling <laughs> that night it's cool <laughs> And then he goes, <laughs> oh, almost exact quote, I don't want to be too pushy, but I am your dad. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'll walk you down. Which, which The thing is, I, I mean, I, I figured out what happened through the incredible writing and subtext, but you don't really even know what happened. You, you got a phone call and then it's like she hangs up and he's like, I'll walk you down the aisle. Oh, that must have been the dad that called. Like I was somebody that's really vague as to what the phone call was even about. And you're like, oh, okay. Her dad's not going to be there for her wedding for some unknown reason. Mm -hmm. So new dad's going to walk her down, down the aisle, apparently, which, which could this be foreshadowing? <laughs> I will walk with my legs. You down the aisle. <laughs> Very importantly. Well, what I love about this, too, is that she gets the phone call from her dad and everybody, all the rest of the family start reacting way too early to the bad news that she's getting. Right. Because she's like. Hey, hello, Dad, and everybody else is like, uh oh, oh this is God, gonna be bad news. why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he'll be her substitute dad. He'll walk with his legs down an aisle with her in Act Three. He promises. And, and, and I think it's during that scene, or maybe the scene right before. I, I wrote this note down, and, and I just have to say this because it is. I always say it as a joke. I didn't know anybody actually said this, but at one point when he goes. Cheese and crackers. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, think, I don't know if it's right here. Cheese and crackers. Your dad can't walk you down the aisle or whatever. But I'm like, did he really say cheese and crackers? Like, yeah. No, no one actually says cheese and crackers. Come on. <laughs> Welcome to the fine, fine world of Pure Flakes. Cheese, we've heard <laughs> cheese and rice as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So now... Little Washington is out shooting hoops one afternoon and the bullies rush in. But this time he knows how to use an Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> OK, there's a couple of moments I want to touch on. The first is one of these child actors actually trips during the chase scene. <laughs> and it's my favorite thing in the world because the panning shot has to stop and wait for him because it's doing <laughs> yeah. a panning shot. And he's like, Ugh! and then the, the camera stops and sort of goes like, oh. And then the kid gets up and keeps running, and it's like, eh, panning, 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 panning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like, we can't do a second take. We're burning VHS here. <laughs> also, the backup music to this bullies getting chased scene is best summer ever, right? It's like, boop, doo, boop, oh. boop, 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 as they're chasing yeah. this child down to beat him. The music in this whole thing was so, like, the, the inspirational Christian rock. And then I think it's Christian rap that's meant to sound like gangster rap. And like yep. the music in general was just so goofy and inappropriate. It was, it was just, it was, it was inappropriate and sad at points. Yeah. And, and so we get this whole little chase scene, right? Where the, the bullies are chasing him around. And I'm thinking to myself, like, it seems to me that he has a good escape plan. There's no reason to escalate the level of violence here, but no, he eventually <laughs> gets to his, Crab apple at Laddle defense bunker, <laughs> right? Where he's got several of these all ready to go, and he starts chucking crab apples at these kids and hitting them. <laughs> and yes. then chases them off. And I'm thinking, yeah, like like just learning how to throw well would have done the same thing, right? And then you could play baseball. <laughs> right, exactly. Jesus. But while he's doing this, the older kid that wanted him to do crimes earlier, 
sees him kicking a little ass, so now he's got a little street cred. Don't oh, yeah. worry, that will never matter. Nothing in this movie ever adds up to anything. The only <laughs> thing I can imagine that makes this part of the movie make sense is that Washington was in the writer's room and was like, y'all are going to talk about that time I got those bullets with those crab apples, right? And they were like, oh, yeah, definitely, Washington. We will spend a significant amount of time on your crab apple fight in this film. Good. Well, I think good. what actually happened is they ended up with a 60 minute long movie where they're like, no one, he can't walk. We need a walking person in this movie as well. We need a sidekick that can walk. Well, the, the, we the other thing is with, with the, the, the gangster guys or whatever, I guess they're supposed to be gangster guys. Like no redemption. No, they just kind of forget nope. all about those guys. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We never say, like, yeah, yeah, like right. They exactly. set up this whole thing. He's going to tell sell him drugs. Then he's proud of him for flinging apples with a stick. And then, and then he's the bad guy. And then all of a sudden, uh, oh, we forget that they're existing. They, it's just like what, there's such a good opportunity to make up some more Christian nonsense about how they save the, the gangsters lives. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like the guy was redeemed because he saw he was inspired by the cop or whatever. Yeah. There's, and also, by the way, a quick note on Chekhov's fucking crab apple. It's we will never use the fact that this kid has like a spot on aim with crab apples. <laughs> right. right. Like yeah. there's never a point where he's going to have to like kill a squirrel in the woods for them to survive or anything. So, yeah. Right. I mean, it, would, it would have been great if it's like what, if that's part of his rehab. OK, stand up here and dodge crab apples. <laughs> <laughs> One second. I know just the kid who can train me in this. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so and then, of course, we've we've been looking at an all black cast now for, I don't know, two minutes. So it must be time for a drive by. <laughs> yes, of course. Not just a drive by, a drive by shotgunning. I wanted so yeah. <laughs> wanted so badly for him to reach out the window, boom, and then the guys on the porch are just like, "That's that's bird shot, and that's a very short range weapon." <laughs> I mean, it's at her. I just wanted to cut to all the people who are in the car going, "Like, man, could you have gotten maybe a handgun?" My ears, because I can't well, hear. Well, the, the, the one guy had a handgun. Let, let's let one guy had a handgun. Yep. The other guy had a shot, and and they were driving by and shooting for. For reasons unknown, I guess. I don't just because they're yep. black. Is that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much black it. people yeah, exactly. shoot each other while sitting on the porch. Have you not seen Boys in the Hood? <laughs> and and once again, keep in mind, there's no reason for this, right? So like Washington is watching this happen, right? He's right. just off in the corner and he sees all this happen. So now we think maybe there will be some part of the plot that has to do with uh, him having witnessed this crime. Nope. Nothing. You think maybe yeah. there will be some escalating gang war that comes from this? Nope. Nothing. There is no reason for this scene. Nope. It will right. never, ever matter to the plot of this I, movie. I, I was thinking that maybe he was going to crab apple the driver and boom, they go flying off. <laughs> oh, Ian, that's so that much would, better than this movie. It would have been dope, right? He crab apples the, the, the handgun out of the one dude's hand, boom. Yeah. And then, and then, did that, and that's what, and, and that's what brings Ray rated to G Jesus or whatever. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, all right. So now late that that very same night preaches out copping and little Washington runs up on him. He's like, hey, hey, officer, I need your help. You're a police officer and I need you right now. And he's like, oh, you know what? I just got a call. I got to run. Have fun, kid. Bye. I just wrote in my notes. Excuse me. Shoots Washington in the face. <laughs> 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 and isn't this when he had a second job as a is this this is when he 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 all of a sudden was a night watchman yes a, his second job as a white car dealership or yeah. something which is like is it i don't i'm still confused now is he even a cop i think i i couldn't tell i thought he was a cop that was investigating something at that parking lot i i don't i have no fucking clue because no no he, he was he was working there he said something about having to go to a second job which is hilarious. He was just talking about how blessed he was and how amazing it was that he became a cop. And it's like, well, they don't even give you a car. You got to use right, your mom's Corolla. And <laughs> and now you got to work a second job watching at a car dealership, looking at better cars than you drive or whatever. It's like, right. I don't even, it was weird. It was just like, wait, now he's got a second job. I don't get this. And again, no reason for that. Yeah, he's got a second job as a cop because he's called away to cop stuff so like what was that job process like he was like yeah no i'll, I'll watch your car lot but um you know if there's any crimes i gotta go keep being a cop i'm a cop 24 7 that's my rule yes 
Yeah. Yeah, it was it was like I can just leave my post here at the <laughs> at the junkyard or whatever the hell he was doing so I can go do cop stuff. It's like, well then aren't you on duty? Shouldn't you be getting yeah, paid for sure. cop stuff? <laughs> and not for this stuff? Yeah. But he gets a call about a sexual assault or something. And it turns out it's the two, it's the gangster kid that was trying to get Washington to sling dope and his buddy. Right. Again, no reason for that. And Preach is, tr- he, he shows up, they run, he's trying to arrest one of them when the other one gives him the big paralysis kick in the head. Right. Yeah. Which, by the way, they already showed at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Although it was different in the beginning of the movie. At the beginning of the movie, I thought there was a gunshot. There was some sort of flash and the thing went off and I... And then when they replayed the, the second time, it was a totally different. He just kicked him in the face. Like, it was very weird. Right. Like, like again, the movie had tried to trick us into thinking it was more interesting than it really was. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And this is where we get him flashing back on his life. And this was almost my best worst, best worst life to flash back on. He flashed oh, back God. on. He flashes back on in order, not being able to read, mm-hmm. throwing walnuts, and then... Mm-hmm. Giving his wife a ride in the car. (laughs) That was it. Yeah, that was his entire life, man. And also, like, by the way, the movie finally catches up with the introductory scene. Right. And then it does a goddamn flashback. It's like we finally caught up and we're going back in time again. Fuck you. This movie almost won me over, though. If it had just kept flashing back every time we got to the kick and then the movie had ended. (laughs) That's pretty good. Come on now. (laughs) You got me, movie. You got me. Yeah, and that, and that, and that's the moment where he's laying there, and he hears he hears the the <laughs> stoned Jesus's voice or whatever Mm-mm. talking to him, and and the yeah. the only thing I, I was like, man, God has such a fucking annoying voice. Like I thought to myself, <laughs> do I have to hear you all the time in heaven? In which case, could I just go to hell now? That would be so much better. <laughs> yeah, God's got and he's going, breathe, keep yeah. your eyes on me, and it's just like, well. Breathe, he knew, right? Like, you're not helping him out there. And keep your eyes, you're invisible. So fuck you. Yeah. And and it's funny because, because, yeah, breathe. And now I get when, you know, another one of the miracle moments a little later when the the doctor's talking to him about how he couldn't breathe, how he said he he was able to breathe or whatever on his own. And she was like, this is, this is impossible. Oh, right. That must must have been the foreshadowing, God telling him to breathe. So it was God that allowed him to to breathe. Oh, he, he, God gave him breathing powers. God, right, yes. and talking powers, of yes. course. Right. Yeah. No, we'll learn that in a second too. Yeah. So right, but now now it makes sense because I didn't realize that that's what God was saying. I couldn't quite understand <laughs> God. I just heard him saying something. I thought he was saying, "Look at my knees." Or something. I don't <laughs> <even know. laughs> so, all right. So now, little Washington catches up with him. Right, he's laying on the ground, paralyzed. Little Washington catches up with him, and I don't. Maybe calls it in, maybe doesn't. We don't know. Unclear. But eventually cops show up. <laughs> and I say maybe no, because the because one of the cops walks up and she's like, hey, little kid, the fuck you doing here? Did <laughs> right? Did you kick him in the face? <laughs> Do you want to snitch? Huh? Do <laughs> you like snitching? Well, the other thing is, I don't know if you noticed, but that I don't know if it was bad acting or what if we were if there was supposed to be some sort of uh, background noise that they forgot to put in in, in post production. But she was yelling the whole time. Yeah. I, I'm yeah like, what try- is she yelling at? <laughs> <laughs> well, because, yeah, they've got the el- the helicopter taking off in the background or whatever. And that's clearly what she's supposed to be reacting to. But it it's not loud or anything. <laughs> so it's just like talking just to talking somebody who's to wearing head headphones. like this. <laughs> Black children don't understand things. <laughs> that's all I can think of is like. Another racist moment in there where it's like, I have to over enunciate and yell at you. <laughs> All right. So now we're at the hospital. They're they're hard at work trying to fix preach. And this is where we get the first doctor that just, you know, unilaterally declares something miraculous. <laughs> right. you know, the, the ER guy says, yeah, he told us that a guy kicked him in the head and then the side. And she says, wait, he told you that? And they're like, yep. And she's like, it's an impossible miracle from Jesus. <laughs> Science must be wrong. <laughs> right. And they go, how, is, how did you know it was impossible? Because he's stupid and dyslexic. No. <laughs> she slowly takes off her stethoscope, throws it into the open flame that is for some reason behind her, <laughs> right. walks off into the middle distance. <laughs> Which is weird because I, I don't remember. He's First off, it's the next day 
or whatever, week later, a day later, I don't know, it's not long late, you're talking to him now. Yeah. So you're asking him questions. He's completely lucid. He's he's talking. He's fine. And she's like, wait, you talk to him? Yeah, that's impossible. Well, wh- why, why would that be impossible? Are you saying that because the paralysis would make your voice, you you not be able to talk? Well, then why are you asking me questions? Right. And could it possibly be that maybe you slightly di- misdiagnosed, maybe you thought it was worse than it was. Maybe my spinal cord wasn't completely severed. Right. You know, I mean, like, th- that's your first thing is like, impossible that you spoke while you're speaking to me now the next day. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. And like I said, just this desperate effort to, like, carve out a little tiny bit of space for Jesus in this movie about science fixing a paralyzed guy. Right. right. And and then, and then she says also about the in the same the same scene he says something about she goes where's your respirator and he goes I never had one mm-hmm. and she goes none of this makes sense <laughs> just what you want your doctor saying yeah <laughs> right. I'm sorry I have no fucking idea what's going on I'm a doctor <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're taught not to say that regardless <laughs> right. of the situation I'm fucking fooled. Yeah. I'm stumped. <laughs> no idea. All right, I'm your doctor. Goodbye. But but it, but it, it it speaks to it speaks to the idea of of these like you know when you talk to like a, a Christian or a religious apologist type person, it always has to be absolute. Yep. That's that's what you get. Like when you say, "Well, I'm not exactly sure." Oh, well, then it, 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 if you don't know, then it must be Jesus. And it's one of those things where it's like science was wrong. No, science isn't wrong. A scientist may have misdiagnosed or maybe we didn't know all the information and then we got more information and we based on what we knew at the time. But it's like this idea that if they diagnosed him not to be able to breathe and then he can breathe, well, then then science is we got to throw it all out the window. Yeah, right, right, exactly. The I don't know and you don't know, therefore I know, and it's Jesus. Exactly. Right. That's the formulation of every goddamn Christian argument. It's why every time there's a doctor in one of these movies and the person can walk or the person survives or the little boy breathes or the little girl cures her cancer or whatever, the doctor always has to look at his hands and be like, perhaps the Lord is real. Because in real life, doctors are like, hey, that was unexpected. I'm so happy for you because I'm on your side and my worldview yeah. was not depressed. Dependent on you not walking again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so his family shows up, jokes about pulling his plug a little bit. A little too right? soon. Too <laughs> soon, in my opinion. I think so. I think so. So then we we watch the filmmaker slowly realize that there's not much to do with the paralyzed guy for the next 45 minutes, it's- right? The rest of this movie will be the people who made this movie being like, come on, there's got to be something people who are paralyzed do. Stop saying he's paralyzed. (laughs) The daughter-in-law walks in. She's like, great. Now who'll walk me down the fucking aisle? (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) Yeah. And every I I kept throughout the whole movie, every time there was I would think I kept saying to myself, man, their bar for what's a miracle is so much lower than mine. (laughs) <laughs> right like throughout the entire yeah. movie it's like only a miracle will get you to move your finger someday it's like well, <laughs> well maybe not you know <laughs> only one third of a miracle yeah <laughs> so and and i love okay so there's a really fun way to watch this scene if you imagine that the wife and the daughter-in-law to be know that he's paralyzed and they're trying to find an end to explain that to him Right. This scene is goddamn hilarious, right? Ooh, that is true. Yeah. Because every time they start to talk, he's like, don't worry, I'll be fine. And then they'll start trying to talk again. He's like, I'm going to walk you down the aisle. I'll be back to work in six weeks. But right. they don't know yet. So he talks about so much walking in this scene. It's like a comedy <laughs> sketch. It is. Yeah. It's just like, and you know what? I've been meaning to say this. We should walk more. I have a walking trail by my house that I'm going to use every single day. And from now on, I will use my legs. Now, what were you going to tell me? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, people used to tell me how nice my legs were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I can't wait to do is go off and do some paddle boating. <laughs> so, Sometime later, he's meeting with his his doctor and he's like, you know, doctor, I'm going to walk. And she's like, look, it's a miracle you're even alive. And OK, 
He got kicked in the head. Right. <laughs> it's not a miracle when you survive. Like, I, I can say for certain at least one third of the people on this call got kicked in the head and didn't die or lose their ability to walk. Very true. Very true. <laughs> well, and, and, and it, it's, it's the same thing. Here's the thing that, that, I mean, if you know anything about anything about paraplegics, quadriplegics, how paralysis works, the fact is that, that I keep hearkening back to about the first time when she says you shouldn't be able to talk. And then she says, you shouldn't be able to breathe. And then it's like, you're not going to walk. What? You shouldn't be alive. Well, the fact is that if you're like Christopher Reeves, Christopher, the, people like, if you're so paralyzed that you at the right spot with the full sever of the spinal cord and this sort of stuff, that you almost die or you could have died, it kills some people, but you uh, usually lose function of your, of your involuntary muscles as well, right? Sometimes you have to be on a respirator. There's things like, because of, mm -hmm. and obviously that didn't happen to him. Right. He's breathing. Yeah. So we know that he's we know that he's more paralyzed from the chest down or, or that he's not that it wasn't a full sever of the spinal cord. So we know that it's not maybe as bad as she originally thought it was going to be. They probably would have re-diagnosed him and said, oh, OK. And they wouldn't put him through fucking rehab. <laughs> right. Right. If they didn't think there was any chance he was ever going to walk. Right. I mean, you, you, did you ever see Christopher Reeve with them pushing his legs and trying to get his legs to work? <laughs> no, because of the severity of the spinal Great injury. Fucking point. But of course, it, it, he's like, well, you know, it's God and God's going to make me be able to walk. And she goes like, I scoff at your silly God. I science for <laughs> I am a doctor and we know all there is to know. Yes, <laughs> which is what happens. But that's that's exactly what happens. And they they always uh, probably three or four times in here they say something about da 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 da, -da science. Yeah, <laughs> like a pejorative. It's hilarious. Well, what do you and your science think about science stuff? <laughs> well, and what I love is that immediately the wife is like. I'd like a second opinion, which is not how that works, by the way. It's not like another doctor comes in and goes like, all right, maybe you'll walk again. Third opinion, you'll walk. Fourth opinion, you're walking right now. You're running a marathon. <laughs> well, well, to them it is. Could I keep getting an opinion until I get one that I like? Yes, right, right. <laughs> when she said that, I wanted the doctor to be like, oh, okay, here's your second opinion. You're a hick who doesn't know what a second opinion right. is, and it hits you harder than your husband statistically does. I'm just saying. <laughs> so God. <laughs> <laughs> or the old joke, your husband will never walk again. I'd like a second opinion. He's fucking ugly, too. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no, but she was a second opinion from a Christian doctor. God right, damn exactly. <laughs> yes. All right, well, once again, these silly Christian movie doctors are dismissing the power of God. So while they think on what they've done, we're going to pause for a quick break, and we'll be back soon with even more of this dumb shit. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Officer Lawrence, thanks so much for being here. Well, we got to tell you, officer, your story is so inspiring. I mean, doctor said you'd never move below your neck again. And now you can walk. Right. Yeah. Um, now, I, I mean, are you are you able to, like, look up what my doctors told me or? Uh... No, because of patient confidentiality, we can't. Why? Oh, no reason. No reason. Yeah, the doctors totally told me I would never move again. 100% what they said. Those bastards. Yeah. And then, you know, after physical therapy, which they provided, and of course, all the various surgeries and all of the machinery that science has created, I could move. <gasps> oh, my. But there was a nurse that was a total bitch. Those, those bastards. That sounds bad. Anyway, I, I, so I was thinking like 99% of the movie could be like me lying in bed feeling sad for myself. What, what do you guys think? Uh, can, can we give you a pointless black child friend? You sure can. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open on a quick uh, being paralyzed montage. <laughs> You know, that can't last long. <laughs> and again, this movie is so phenomenal because it's just and by the end of it, it's scrambling for things to show that it hasn't shown. Yeah. But that 
you know, we get like all the cops coming to visit him. I love that the cop that was giving him shit for his car earlier is now giving him shit for his paralysis. <laughs> Come on, dude, find a different gear. <laughs> this uh, razzing thing doesn't really work when I say, hey, you, hey uh, look who will never please their wife again. I'm getting better at air quotes. I don't know if you noticed. I wonder if they're going to give you a real wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and isn't this also the point where the, where the, where Washington shows up? Mm -hmm. and, and again, uh, it, oh, I, I wanted to like strangle the TV. What's he? What's he? Ten? Not eight? I don't know how old Washington is, but I love how young black kid couldn't possibly understand the word operation. Oh my fucking guy! He would have played the fucking game. <laughs> he goes. They said that you had a op or h on. Yeah, <laughs> like like he had no idea what, and then. Apparently, there's something called a docator who's yeah. going to help you out, like, and that your legs is, is don't work. Like, I mean, what is this kid? Like, it was so ridiculous. Well, and the best part is they do that lazy, like, look at this kid trick, right? But just once and never revisit it. So. The world of this movie, the only word that Washington doesn't understand, because he will later say paralysis, the right. only word that this child doesn't understand <laughs> is operation. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and fucking Preach's response to this is so goddamn weird. The kid says, you know, I'm the one that came across you. I was really worried about you because I thought you might die. And then he goes, no, actually dying would have been better because then I would have been with Jesus. Yes. Right. To which, by the way, to Washington's credit, Washington's like, hey, could you not talk about Jesus? Yeah, could you for... dial it back on a Jesus? <laughs> you know, a little bit? Yeah. I'm nine and you're a little much. I just want you to know <laughs> yeah. you're a little much. Yeah, is, is, that, is that the point where he actually says, he goes, Jesus is the most important thing. It's like, mm -hmm. what, what about food and water? That would be... <laughs> uh, or walking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Go back to make not understanding basic words. All right. Yeah. Right. You're talking yes. sense. <laughs> well, I, I wrote in my notes. He goes, why do you always talk about Jesus? I wrote, because this movie isn't good enough to get produced without Christianity on the cover. You know? right. <laughs> and then as if to undercut their own fucking point, he says to all his, to, to the little kid, he's like, well, you know what? They're going to send me to a different hospital. I'm like, huh, they're not going to send you to a church. Weird. Weird. Right. <laughs> Given your. Yeah. So they transfer him to Bethesda via private plane. Again, this is one of those. It really happened this way. So we have to make it happen that way in the movie, even though we can't afford a private jet even long enough for him to get on or off of it on a tarmac. <laughs> They're just right. taking video of United planes and blurring out the United. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. His private plane that he got to ride on. <laughs> yeah, this uh, it was in this. Is this? I'm trying to remember if this is right before or, or, or after my note with it. Somebody's crying and he's he's cracking bad jokes. Whoa, going to cause a flash flood here. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which I'm like, OK, here, where's the Noah's Ark uh, reference? But the uh, but but then it was this was where was the force? I think it was I remember them them saying something about which was she trying to get him into the plane or whatever. And he's saying, you're not going to be able to lift your husband. He's dead weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where they were talking about getting the van later. Is it, oh, mm -hmm. was that the van? I'm sorry, I thought that was in the airplane. I put that in, in the thing, but uh, <laughs> this is the same scene with the with the white. Yeah, oh. but the, all part of this uh, with the wife with the 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 mm -hmm. yes, trying, trying to get him moving, and it's like they have no couth with this guy's barrel. <laughs> He's dead weight. He's a hey, drop this fool now. He's an idiot. Uh, get rid of him. <laughs> right. Just blink twice if you want me to kill your husband with my bare hands for you. <laughs> All right. So, they, yeah, we get to watch him sit in traffic a little, for a little while. And then they check into this very nice hospital. Mm -hmm. And then we cut to me like, OK, so it's that night or whatever. He's at the rehab place and he's urging his wife to pray for the dude that kicked him in the head. Oh, my favorite. And she's like, no, I want him to be handicapped. I'm a Christian. And here's the thing. <laughs> I get this scene if it's setting up a moment of forgiveness between them, right? Like they catch the kid and he says, I want you to know you're forgiven. And the wife forgives him, too. It will never pay off. No, nope. they just no. decided to have a scene where the wife monologues about like, I hope his asshole turns inside out and gets eaten by a bear. <laughs> Put it in the movie. Well, yeah, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it's all set up earlier. They could have had the Washington kid 
reach out to Ray Ray or whatever the gangster's name was, X Ray mm-hmm. or whatever, and 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 then the Apple Atal uh gets him to come and and wow, this kid's got something, and he visits the guy in the hospital and they forgive him. It was so set up for the gangster guy to to be redeemed, yeah, and everyone to forgive, and they completely missed the boat, probably because it didn't happen in real life or. You know, we don't want to glorify gangbangers. Something like that, yeah. Or because the writers were so fucking stupid that they didn't realize they had set all that up, right? <laughs> they were just yes. like, I've seen scenes in other movies where people talk about other characters. I don't know why they do it, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's also, out there. Okay, so wait, this, there's this great moment that comes right after that. I love this so much. We see him, and we got to see him sitting there like hating being paralyzed. But they can't think of a way to do that visually, except to have a ice cold glass of water sitting to his left and a remote control sitting to his right. But the people that would have put that shit there know he's par- who the fuck would have done that. You know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes. yes. And I've, I've got this Oculus Rift all filled up with <laughs> VR porn that I'll put just here on the floor out of your reach. <laughs> That's a- <laughs> You see the nurses taking bets outside. All right. If he goes for the water, Mindy gets 20. If he goes for neither, I get 40. And we split everything if he goes for the book. Okay. <laughs> it was just some sort of motivation. There was a sign on it. It's like, you're thirsty, aren't you, cripple? Why don't you go ahead and grab it? <laughs> if Jesus really loved you, you could drink this water. <laughs> you could drink this water. So you and need it to would turn be it to wine. wine. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, and, and then, by the way, because I guess the director thought, oh, we really aren't getting the full paralyzed experience, the fucking sink starts dripping. So the experience that we're having as film viewers is watching a person breathe while we listen to water drip <laughs> is the goddamn movie. Okay. And then he fantasizes about drinking the water for a second. I don't know. Yes, this movie has a doodly do about drinking water, listeners. In case you didn't quite hear that, yes, here is a fantasy montage where he drinks water. Oh, yeah. It, it would be one thing if it's like you know, for a second you're like, oh, is he willing himself to? And then it's like, no, nothing happened. Nope, it was just <laughs> still we right back where he was. We were still nope. watching. He's still fucked. Nothing happened. <laughs> All right. So then, OK, so then we cut to mom. We have this very brief scene where mom is learning how much it's going to cost to get a van that he's going to be able to get in and out of. And we have a, another one of those secular assholes who's just like, yeah, your husband is meat. I don't love God. <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah, I, I, they might have well just said God, good science, bad. Yeah. Right. Like in this scene. right. Oh, and, and speaking of which, they follow that scene up. With the nurse lining up all the pills he has to take, and he's like, all the goddamn pills you want me to look, that's, you're alive, you asshole. Right. More importantly, that's pain medication. A lot of this movie will be about how much pain he was in, and also a lot of this movie will be about how much he didn't want to take the medication they gave him. <laughs> I wonder if there's a connection. He's like, ha ha, you brought me those on the street, I would have arrested you. Mostly because you're black. Yeah. <laughs> everybody who deals drugs in this movie. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you're not the drug dealing color, so you don't have to worry about it, but still, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but yeah, that was his, that was his that was his his joke, but it's like, okay, I'm I'm getting an underlying theme here with these people. <laughs> yeah. Of course, if it was if it was the Christian bikers, they would have been there to bring him stacks of Bibles, but the uh this lady's the drug dealer who's just trying to science him into into no pain or whatever. <laughs> right. It's so hard to make that seem sinister, but boy, don't they try. <laughs> I know. All right. So now we get the scene where they're showing him how to use his breath operated wheelchair. And of course, I'm watching this fucking scene thinking, wow, it's really pretty incredible what science could do. That's not what I'm supposed to be thinking at all, is it? <laughs> right? No, it definitely is not. And of course, it's the it's like that scene in Avatar when the dude first links up, you know, he's like, I can run. And they're like, but don't run yet. And he just takes off. And they I guess they feel like they're going for some humor here where the paralyzed guy falls over. Right. Yeah, they will return to the paralyzed guy falling over is humor. Well, several times. Never not going to be scary and not funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, no, he, yeah, there's a couple times where he. 
he falls and breaks his neck again. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right as he's just making his recovery, <laughs> as he's walking Darling. her down the aisle, and he and he he he, make, he makes the uh, the drunk the drunk driving reference. Yeah. Oh, that pole must have been drunk driving. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I thought he was just going to drive himself off a cliff as he tips over. He's like pension, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have gave me them pills, lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, and as if they don't have enough troubles already, now there's a dude at their house telling the son about how, you know, how much expensive it's going to be to widen all the doors and, and add all the ramps that they're going to need, right? And yes. is it me or is the movie going for an angle of like, I mean, do people really need that many ramps? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know what they're going for. What I was getting is, wow, if only the target audience of this goddamn movie would vote better, this wouldn't be left to an individual. What, yeah, only <laughs> in the American hellscape could you have these stakes, right? Right. Imagine trying describing this even two or three generations from now where it's like, no, no, no. The movie's about how hard it is for a person with a handicap to live. What do you mean you don't understand? You watch movies from the oil rush. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it, it, and and meanwhile, of course, he's back at the hospital, like, Beatrix kiddoing his big toe. Right? <laughs> I love that all movies, and this isn't just Christian ones, I love that all movies think that, like, there's a certain amount of strain involved in healing paralysis. Like, that one day you just, like, really try and then your legs work. Like, That's Superman just didn't try hard enough. That's such an insidious fucking message, man. And this movie is so baked with it, right? Like she, it, the nurse comes in and he's like, yeah, hey, you know, my legs started moving last night. She's like, yeah, those are involuntary muscle spasms. They can be quite painful. That is not a sign of recovery. Don't get your hopes up. It, 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 which, like, that's what really happened. But of course, in this movie, she's like, yes, because you're a paralyzed cripple and you're worthless and God hates you. <laughs> <laughs> although although it was funny because at one point during during the, all that stuff he says uh he goes well i've learned i've got to trust god a lot more lately and it's like not like he steered me wrong yet <laughs> 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 i mean dyslexia two jobs to make ends meet the only guy who drives an 87 corolla on the police force <laughs> Paralysis. Paralyzed, yes. <laughs> are so, there, so good. Just asking real quick, are there any other deities who I might have faith in? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Slightly better track records. But it's also and it's also this moment that I, I think he's laying there that it kind of cracked me up because he's like, you ever feel like giving up? I mean, I've been paralyzed for three weeks now. It's like, <laughs> he really, their bar for miracles is very low. And his, I mean, not not that I, you know, it must suck to be paralyzed. I'm not saying it, but it's like, it's like he's ready, all this faith, but he's ready to give up so quickly. Yeah. You know? I've been paralyzed for 45 minutes and I don't know <laughs> if I can take it any longer. Yeah. The, the whole, this whole, it's, it's such a, between the, them discouraging him and him having this indomitable faith that is tested every five minutes when he can't get the drink of water. Or it's just like. It's it's so overplayed. This yeah. the miracle's coming. The miracle's coming. Well, and it, so yeah, so we we double down on that yet again. Where they have that scene where he's with the paralyzed doctor, right? He's sitting across from this doctor. We don't know that this doctor's in a wheelchair until the end of the scene, right? Right. So he's sitting across from this doctor. Explain the doctor's trying to explain to him his situation, and he's going, "No, no, 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 God, God yeah, God." <laughs> And and the actual line from the evil doctor is, and I quote, I don't think God is in the business of fixing what science has proven to be broken. Right. First of all, what? Just from a sentence <laughs> construction standpoint, what? And secondly, what? Just from a logic point, what? But then, as the accent of the scene, it turns out the doctor's in a wheelchair. So the point, the movie wants us to be like, oh, he's so negative because he's in a wheelchair. Oh, is it, or, or is it he's in a wheelchair because he's so negative? <laughs> right. Well, you know what? Given this movie, it's both. Yeah, yeah, right. God only helps those who help himself, loser. Yeah. <laughs> Gold bricker. Yeah. But, but that really is the scene. He's like, hey, man, you know, you could still take your daughter down the aisle in a wheelchair. There's still a lot of dignity 
in your life and, and you can, you know, you're still, you're not half a person. You're still a fool. And, and he's like, nope, I'm not. Cause I'm going to walk. And only if I can walk, am I worth anything? And the guy's like, okay. All right. Should have right. showed you I was in the wheelchair before the end of the scene, but bye. I can't walk. Do you understand what you just said about me? I do not. I do <laughs> not. I am waiting for a sky oh, wizard. Did I call you the N word? I've been thinking oh. it. I didn't think I let it slip. Sorry. Sometimes I say it when people sneeze. <laughs> and this whole time he's like, he's like, no, it's God. And the other guys, no, it's science. And then it's like, but the, meanwhile, it's like, God is helping me by sending these doctors. And the science that I don't believe in to yep. help me. It's like, yeah. he's like, I just need to keep trusting them, the scientists who God sent me. Uh, and then eventually when I get better, I can credit God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was like is the whole the plot of the conversation of this movie. Yeah. Right. So, okay. And now this is the point where we have to, like, he has to meet his, um, his new roommate with whom he will have, I'm going to recover faster than you shit talk for the rest of the film. Right. But yes. it's not. It's not fun shit talk. No. And it never pays off. He just no. will constantly turn to his friend throughout the movie and be like, you're going to be stuck in that chair forever, loser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I did. That's, that's, I, my, my only note on that was like, he, he basically turns and goes, I've got to admit, watching you suffer makes me feel great. <laughs> like, that was like the entire thing. It's like, you're paralyzed, you fucking idiot. Huh, so am I. But man, is it, is it fun to watch you struggle? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Wait, then we check back in with Washington. And this is a pretty pointless fucking scene, but I want to bring it up for a couple of reasons. So, Washington is coming home. He checks the mail. It's all past due notices and everything, but he's got like a, a letter from his pen pal, the paralyzed cop. The only thing I, that makes this scene worth bringing up is the mess in his house and how neatly placed every messy item is in this home. <laughs> And how insane the mess is. There's like a soup bowl filled with socks and they have like an upside down washing machine for a chair. <laughs> um, also, there's a picture of Washington and the cop from the D.A.R.E. program at his school framed on the mantle. Right. What the fuck is this kid's relationship with that cop? Very close. Like, oh, that's the man who showed me how to make crab apple at Laddles. <laughs> what? Yeah, you think mom would have questions. He's like, mom, can I put this framed photo of my dare officer on the mantle? No, you can't. We're suing the Catholic Church. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know how this yeah, goes. You, you, you guys are ignoring the main thing. He doesn't have a family, okay? Mm. He doesn't have parents. He lives by himself. Come oh, on. Oh, this is just Washington's <laughs> apartment. <laughs> he's a bachelor. Yes, of there course. You go. He's he's a he's a young black man. They have no families. <laughs> Actually, like that so much of this movie makes way more sense if we believe that that kid has just written that house on his own. Right? Yeah. Like the where the fuck <laughs> is his mom later when the kid goes to Bethesda shit? <laughs> so. <laughs> exactly. And that's why you know the the guys are Look, uh, I know you got a lot of rent to pay at nine. If you want to start slinging dope, yeah, <laughs> it'll be a lot. You'll, you'll make a lot more money than you will uh, in making those uh, crab apple slingers. Yeah, it's, it's it's it's. I'm like the kid has no. There, there's never a reference to his family. We don't see nope. his mom. We don't. Nope. All right, and so now we get this amazing scene, and amazing not for the reasons that they anticipated it would be amazing. This scene where him and his roommate are gonna fuck with the nurse by making a puppet of him <laughs> which don't get me wrong i like i like that in principle right like i love the idea of there being a scene where he's having fun with being paralyzed and everything but they fuck it up so goddamn bad it's it becomes such a dark horror because he's just barely hanging off this weird rope with a rubber band around his wrist and the yeah. nurse is just like oh well you're not walking. And he's like, I am not walking. No. <laughs> Were you trying to hang yourself? No. 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 Well, and they they can't think of anything to do with this. So they just have the nurse faint. And then the other nurse walk in and go, uh-oh, she fainted. Yeah. I guess. And that's, that's what I want from, that's what I want from my nurses. I, I want my medical professionals to be so easily fooled by, by ridiculous <laughs> gags that they faint. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> see now again, Ian's writing a better movie than we had. You just have a montage of her like opening the peanuts can with the snakes in it and looking down <laughs> so we can boop her in the nose, sitting on whoopee cushions. <laughs> And just fainting every time. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's like having a scene with the surgeon going, you know, guys, blood makes me vomit. Yeah. <laughs> I got a good feeling about today. So though. when we cut this guy open, blindfold me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie just spent, I shit you not, three entire minutes on the paralyzed guy dangling shtick, which means we're going to need a minute to recalibrate. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Preach manage to walk his son's fiance down the aisle? Why the fuck does that matter? Does this movie know that spunk and gumption can't counteract paralysis? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the dormant conclusion of Badge of Faith. What do you mean people still know I got impeached? I blew up that Iraqi guy. Sir, for, for the third time, he was Iranian. Uh, um, Mr. Dodd? Ooh, Tyler, who's this? Oh, uh, this is Ian. He's a, a new hire in our paralysis miracles department. Right, 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 right. I'm going to call you Q-Ball. Because my shaved head? Yeah, sure. That's why. What's up? Uh, well, I was just looking through these uh, paralysis miracle orders you've put in, and they seem kind of vague. How so? Well, so so right here, uh, for that little boy in the wheelchair under miracle, you've put itchy toe. Itchy toe, yeah, that's a great one. And then for that police officer, you wrote um, walking, but not walking by any metric of walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that did feel oddly specific, sir. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, um, since you're God and all, maybe we could cure everyone totally, you know? I mean, we could, but like, where's the showbiz? Um, sir, can, can we just... Sorry, where, where's the showbiz? The drama, the stuttering few steps, the swell of the music. Work with me here. Come on, the showbiz. Uh, well, I, I guess it's not super dramatic just to cure everyone. Exactly, cue ball. Now, go itch some toes. Itch some toes. Got it. Now, Tyler, explain to me where Iran is again. Uh, it's on Earth. Sir. And which one's that? <sighs> and we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to open up on Washington getting confronted by the bullies once more because... Actually, sorry, there is no because with scenes in this movie, so it's just that's just what's happening is why. <laughs> it's just what's happening. It is as though they fucked up the shoot schedule and someone came to the editor and was like, hey, I don't know how to tell you this. We accidentally shot um, two of the bully confrontation scenes. <laughs> Which one did you want to use? And the editor was like, well, seeing as I've got 45 minutes of lying in a bed groaning and 10 minutes of plot, I'm going to go with both. We're going to use yep. both bully confrontation <laughs> scenes. Right. Like once again, this scene. OK, so this time, though, the bullies catch up with him and they cut him off at the pass and the one kid punches him out. There's never a reason for any of that. Right. None of this comes. We, we will never see the bullies again. We will never refer back to the fact that he got punched out. He won't learn anything from this scene. Nope. No, and, and what has he learned in general? He's learned that if you get bullied, the best policy is to get more firepower. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, that's like all he's learned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, if there had been an after credit scene where we watch Washington hoist a grenade launcher onto his shoulder as the bullies play in a nearby <laughs> yard, <laughs> this scene makes sense. But since there's not... It doesn't. Yeah, right. But, but no. see, here, here's isn't this the running theme in this whole this whole film is, you know, all this stuff about him. I'm going to forgive the guy that kicked me in the head. He's supposed to be about forgiveness. But everything I mean, even his little jokes, which I get they're supposed to be jokes. But, you know, with his buddy, they're, they're talking about like, why did God keep you his other paralyzed buddy or whatever? Why did God keep me alive? He's like. And then they're like, well, God kept me alive after he paralyzed you because he knew that if I was paralyzed, then we were both unnecessarily paralyzed. And then, then we could help each other through being paralyzed and we wouldn't want to kill each other. And it's always this weird, like, I'm here so that I can make fun of you. Mm -hmm. And it's always this kind of weird vengeance thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, even when it's meant to be kidding, like the entire film is like, I'm paralyzed. 
so that I can make fun of you for being paralyzed. That's my place on the earth. Ooh, I get to help this kid learn how to beat up other kids. Like, you know, not resolve problems. Right, right. Yeah, his his advice to the kids was not like, you know, turn the other cheek or anything rooted in Christian morality. It was, no, no, no you got to hit them with a it stick. It was, here's the sharp stick. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's not so much God's plan as it is the way I play strategy board games. <laughs> it's just like, right. all right, I attack you with all of my blue pieces. Eli, you don't have any blue pieces. I bought some from the store. You have to let me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we cut back to preach, and then we introduce this element to the story, which is bizarre to me, right? So his wife comes in. He's, like, working on something. His wife or the nurse or somebody comes in with a newspaper and says, hey, look, you made the headlines. Everybody sure is inspired by your story. But, like, but like he hasn't done anything. His story is right. just he got kicked in the head. Right. Yeah. If, if anything, his story is cautionary at this point. Right. Yeah, exactly. All the kids are going around and getting kicked in the head now. Yeah, right. Everyone's inspired. <laughs> Well, he's like, I give all the credit to God. And I'm like, come on, man. The guy who kicked you in the head deserves more credit than God. <laughs> right, exactly. And then they didn't have any idea how to end this scene. So they just brought him food that they didn't like. Yeah. Liver and tofu. Oh, no. Seen it. Right. Well, that's supposed to be the nurse getting revenge for them making her faint. And I wanted so badly oh, is for that her. What that was? Yeah, I wanted that to be her, like, her plot line from now on, like he's finally walking down the aisle with the canes and she side tackles him. Boom! Showed you. That's what you get for making me faint. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Honestly, an escalating prank war with the nurse is exactly one of the 19 things this movie needed to be good. Thank you. Yes. So, okay. And then we have this, uh, I love this moment so much. This may be my favorite scene in the whole fucking movie. The one where he goes to hospital church and yeah. he listens to Namby Pamby, considerate to Muslim and Jews, asshole preacher. Right. Well, th this is wonderful <laughs> for a couple of reasons. One, this movie's like, look at this asshole trying to do religion and failing. But two, this is religion when you acknowledge any other religion, right? You can't talk about anything when you acknowledge the other faith. So he's right. just like. Yeah, behaving in a pattern seems to be things that human beings like. All right, everyone, get out of here. <laughs> well, and, and, and the funny thing is, the funny thing is, what he says is actually the most, out of all the religious nonsense in the movie, what the preacher says is the most useful, profound thing in the entire film. Yeah. He yeah. says, hey, at some point you have to find your, your own ultimate truth, whatever that is, to you. And it's funny, like I said, my 14-year-old daughter was like, well, yeah, that, why, why is that a problem? He's preaching to a bunch of, he's talking to a bunch of people that have different faiths. He's not going to pick one. He's going to say, hey, whatever your truth is, that's what's going to have, have to help you get through this. And like the next scene is him making fun of it. Like, ha ha, what a moron. He yeah. doesn't even know what the <laughs> ultimate truth is. Yes, that is exactly the way they play the scene. This guy is giving the, again, best you can possibly do when you have people of not even just different faiths, but different denominations of Christianity in front of you, right? That 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 half as well, if you think conditionally, clause A could clause B conditionally, you know, that kind of shit. And then the very next scene is them going like, that fucking asshole doesn't even realize Muslims are going to hell. What the hell is he doing preaching, right? But you know what that does make me think of? You know what is a job that has no educational requirements and is tax free? <laughs> <laughs> it's like anybody can be a pastor. Should we yeah, put that in right. the movie? Should we put anybody can be the job I currently do as I'm writing this movie in the movie? Yeah, oh, definitely, for sure. <laughs> That would be like if there was a movie about podcasters where a guy just runs into the record button on the wall and then we see him shoot up to number one on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we get this moment where he's on the walking simulator machine. That, uh -huh. Again, like Ian pointed out, oh, yeah. they wouldn't put him on if they actually didn't think he had any chance of walking again. It's just a cruel, it's just a cruel thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the nurse. Let's, Look at what you're missing, motherfucker. This is what you get for dangling around and making me faint. Let's take that guy that'll never walk again and drag him across a treadmill. That'll be hilarious. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, look at the hopeful look on his face, asshole. <laughs> So I was bored of the movie at this point, and I looked up this machine. It's real, and it's super duper fucking cool, but this movie makes it seem like they just do it, you know, for the fun and shits and giggles yeah. of it. Yeah. This movie explains this machine so badly that if I hadn't looked it up, I would honestly believe that sometimes they just, like, hook you up to this machine so you can remember what walking felt like. <laughs> well, and then, okay, so... Again, you know, we're halfway into the scene before the filmmaker realizes that, wow, you know, watching somebody artificially walk on a treadmill, not visually interesting. Let's have him flash back to jogging. <laughs> God, his memories are boring. <laughs> and this actor, I just want to say, can not Run! I don't know what school of self ass kicking he went to for running, but his legs are, they're so, he's doing backward splits each time he takes a step. All right, man. Yeah. Eli is making fun of your running game, actor. That's right. Get this That's shit right. together. I ch I'm going to be in LA. I challenge you to a race. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then we have to, like, you know, his mood has to descend. So we get a couple of scenes of him, like, not being happy and upbeat anymore and not joking around with his son and not liking being paralyzed, right? Right. Okay, now this is such a bizarre choice for the movie to make. Look, this is an inspirational film. We have already watched him go through hard times. We did not need a third act moment where he was like, you know, we should probably include the part where I tried to divorce my wife and gave up on life as it is. Like, that doesn't help your message. Oh, no, and, and, and just and that whole thing of like maybe God is using this incident as a very vague and sadistic way to put his <laughs> brand of nonsense on me. <laughs> Couldn't God have just made a movie about it happening to somebody else? <laughs> God is using you to get his like what? What? Like like that was that was the entire theme of that was like you know maybe God is using this is is you're the conduit for what for right. what? Like, it's it so bizarre. Ugh. Yeah. So, okay. So then there's this moment where they take him again, completely useless goddamn scene. They take him to like swimming therapy or something. I got to admit, crazy fucking hot. You know, the whole like the women all standing around him going like, okay, now I'm going to massage this. Like, like, I was into it. I was into it. I was thinking about getting kicked in the head for a second. <laughs> <laughs> But then he falls asleep, and I'm like, can this man make it through an entire fucking scene without a doodly do now? <laughs> no. Right. And he doodly do's to being old. Now, I need to talk about the most important part of this scene, and I would say the most important part of the movie, which is that his wife during this scene appears to be vacuuming with his oxygen tank. Did anyone see this except for me? <laughs> I did not. Okay, when you rewatch this movie, or if you're watching this as you listen along, watch the wife. She is doing vacuum pantomimes with the oxygen tank throughout the scene. Was she really? What the f yes. How she's did I moving. Miss that? It's phenomenal. Now, is this before or after she tried to divorce him? Oh, this that's later in the movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, so what we get here is that we get him like fantasizing about or like doodly doing into a memory from the future. I don't fucking know. But he's, he's thinking about a future where he has to be in a wheelchair for his whole life. Boy, that must be the worst thing. He would have no value as a human being at that point, really. Right? <laughs> all right. So then, God damn it, he's paralyzed some more. Like, all of my my fucking notes all start like, okay, well, there's uh, here's another scene where he starts off laying in a goddamn bed. And yep. can I just say, I watched this movie in the middle of my house. There was only so much man lying on his back moaning loudly before everyone in my house at one point walked into the room and was like, hey, man, <laughs> what you watching while your entire family's here over the holidays? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> yeah. And they yes. walked in. They're like, oh, God damn it. I thought it was at least going to be porn. Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> So now this is the moment in the movie where he decides that he wants his wife to go the fuck away and divorce him. And the way the movie plays it is like, no, I'm too much of a burden. I want you to go out there and be happy and everything. But it's really funny if you think about it as like he just doesn't like her anymore. 
<laughs> and legitimately, because she comes in, she's like, you want to divorce me? Okay, fine. She pulls out a pen and she says, when you can sign the divorce papers, I'll divorce you. Take that, you crippled fuck. I thought the nurse was going to answer that by being like, oh, she got you. She got you, son. <laughs> oh. I, I, I think it would have been hilarious if he said, fine, put it in my mouth. I'll sign it with my mouth. And yeah. she's done with you. <laughs> well, it's like she thought of that because she says, like, when you can sign it, with your hand, with, with your that hand, hand <laughs> that hand right there. Yes. Yeah. And it was just such a weird, a weird thing where it's like, he's like, he just comes in and out of nowhere, out of the blue, no contemplation. Just, he was just like, look, you know, I'm not into making rational decisions. So let's get a divorce. <laughs> like, it was just so out of fucking left field. He didn't say like, you didn't see her struggle. You didn't see her, nope. her, her her having pain with him being there. There was no reason. It wasn't like, yeah, I'm really a burden on my wife. We never saw any of that. All of a sudden, no. he just said, fuck you. Well, let's get a divorce. It's it's act three. I got to have something here. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then also, like, so she comes in and, you know, she's like cr- yelling at him and crying and everything. The woman is she's acting in spurts. It's so fuck like all every decision she makes is so bizarre. <laughs> my favorite is when she goes for better or for worse and I said that's not the acting direction <laughs> <laughs> oh. alright so now we have to watch Preach contemplate suicide he, he goes to the top floor of the hospital and sadly blows into his wheelchair tube for a while okay but here's right. the thing he fantasizes about smashing through hospital glass which like he gets a fantasy where he manages it where he blows extra hard and his fucking little wheelchair goes 800 miles an hour and smashes him through to his death but if he had actually tried it which my entire notes for this scene are me just saying please try it please try it please try it he just would have whapped into the very thick very secure glass and then been like (laughs) (laughs) which would have been hilarious if he got more paralyzed (laughs) All right, now the left half of your face <laughs> like, is gone. Hey, too. dumb fuck, you just set yourself back. <laughs> I'm afraid you can no longer, you've lost the privilege of the straw. <laughs> <laughs> you can only turn right on your wheelchair now. Right. And then, and, then, and then when he does, you know, he fantasizes about going through the window. And man, if I thought God had horrible sound production, God's CG skills <laughs> are, are un believable like is falling through the 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 weird green screen oh thing where you actually see the green screen outline around the wheelchair i was like and his hair's not moving at all it's like wow that <laughs> hair's pretty well coiffed to not move when you're falling <laughs> it, it is so it's so bad i was like really you couldn't find one christian guy who volunteered 30 minutes to rotoscope out uh, the chair. And, <laughs> I mean, really? Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> like, literally, like, as you're watching it, you're like, mm, they did it better on Reefer Madness. I'm, I'm they sorry. They really like, did. Like, was, <laughs> <laughs> you've had 85 years to learn how to do this shit. You haven't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we, we cut to Washington, right? Because we've almost forgotten about him. He's at the police department. He's come to see Preacher's partner so that she can drive him up to this hospital that's you know far away so he can see him in this in this hospital they had no idea how long to use the driving b-roll to establish that they then went there (laughs) either that or they were trying their damnedest to get to that 90 minutes at a certain point they're like wait there was a time when someone drove (laughs) right okay or or they were like well in reality it took them 20 minutes to get there So, <laughs> I'm sorry, we, this is an authentic we're Christians, movie. We can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> so Washington comes to see him in the hospital. He brought him letters from his D.A.R.E. students. I'm thinking to myself, man, it's a damn good thing I was not one of his D.A.R.E. students. <laughs> 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 little Noah would have been unkind. Oh, here's a card from Little Illusions. Your whole job is a lie, but you can't read this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so they've they've literally now buried him in praise. Everybody sure is inspired by the way he got kicked in the head, took it like a champ, I guess. <laughs> There's also this moment where like Washington 
volunteers to be his new therapy coach. And I thought that could have gone somewhere. That could have been fought. <laughs> so now we've got it. We've got to establish that the community's coming together for him. Right. So we cut back to preach his son who's looking over the bills. Just can't imagine how they're going to renovate this enormous mansion that they live in. <laughs> And that's when the firefighter from next door shows up and says that the whole fire department has volunteered to come in and renovate the house for him. Okay. Right. But they forgot to establish this character. So he's like, hello, I am your neighbor who has lived next door. You know me. I'm a fireman. (laughs) And we're and we are here to fix your house. And and look, I mean, I know that this like showing up unexpected thing works great for a movie, but in real life, call, right? What if he's <laughs> jerking off? Right. Oh, um uh ignore this tie I have around my neck. I'm getting I was fancy. I was just playing I was playing a uh, lightsaber game with it is what I was doing. Uh, That's I was lightsabering. Thank you. Naked. Um uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's beat saber is very hard. I sweat a lot. That's trying to <laughs> exercise. <laughs> so. oh and then okay and now it's time for the big miracle guys we've been waiting all fucking movie for this miracle so he is literally hanging off of science right mm-hmm. he is entirely surrounded by science there are science practitioners around him helping him science his way to health and then his mo- his arm moves and the fucking the wife drops to her knees and yells, God is great. The nurses are all like, you're well, you're welcome. She goes, this is the miracle we've been waiting for. Right. It's like, really? This is what we've waited this whole fucking movie for? Was his arm moving just there? <laughs> right. This is this is the miracle from God that took a year of rehab we've been waiting for. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love that. That's. God works in mysterious ways. Like, yeah, that, that's so, really. Yeah, no, I, I find it interesting that despite the mysteriousness of his ways, I can always predict them, right? Yeah. It's not mysterious. <laughs> he, yeah. he behaves precisely in the way you'd behave if you didn't exist. Yes. God works in mysterious ways, just like science. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like basically, it's funny how mysterious it is. It's exactly the, what we thought would happen. Yeah. If he went through rehab. <laughs> Exactly. It's with it's in built into the goddamn name of the center. <laughs> <laughs> Rehabilitation. Also, God's mysterious ways happen to move at the exact same pace as science. Now that yeah, has nothing exactly. to do with this. <laughs> so yeah. So that was the miracle, by the way. The next scene is him leaving the rehab center. Yes. And by the way, leaving the rehab center with Washington. Did they adopt this child? He's a single man about town. I like Ian's theory. Ian has no family. He can go wherever he wants. He has no roots. He goes wherever the fuck he wants. <laughs> and, and then, of course, we get a, another hilarious watching a handicapped person fall out of his wheelchair moment here. <laughs> again. I'm paralyzed again. <laughs> goes right back into the rehab center. Oh, oh I lost God. the arm. <laughs> so, and then we get my, this is such a great little moment of terrible editing. So we get him leaving the rehab center, getting in the van, driving to the airport. Then the goddamn thing comes up and says six weeks later, and we see the plane landing. <laughs> like, man, was there some traffic. <laughs> Bethesda traffic does not fuck around. <laughs> air, traffic, air traffic control was really busy then. <laughs> You're going to have to circle for six weeks. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Roanoke, the Roanoke Airport is uh... <laughs> pretty busy this time of year. Yeah. All right. So now he's he's driving home. I love that we get idle chatter in the car as this scene starts with somebody going, well, I mean, he still can't walk. This movie is kind of bullshit if you think about it. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> but dad says, hey, wait a minute. We're going the wrong way. You should have turned left up there, but you turned right. And he's like, yeah, we've got one little stop to make. And then all of a sudden, all the cops show up on motorcycles and all his biker buddies are there to give him a motorcycle escort to right. nowhere. <laughs> to a, like a presentation ceremony filled with, I'm going to say, max 14 people. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, so, yeah. And <laughs> I, my, of course, my note is what a gross misuse of municipal funds this is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the other one. Did you guys read any of the signs? 
Oh, no, uh-uh. No. Oh, my God. There's one that I, I literally had to pause it and research the guy's last name and ask my kid, ask my daughter. I'm like, is there a pun I'm missing? And she's like, I don't get it either. There was a, a, a somebody holding a sign that said, way to stick to it. And to it was spelled T-U-I-T. Oh, you know what? Because early in the fucking movie, that's his thing at the D.A.R.E. programs is telling oh. kids they have to have stick to it. That's how he got through his dyslexia and shit. But even so, but why, I was like, do they spell it T-U-I-T? Like his, I'm like, is his last name Pruitt? Or is there, is to it some kind of pun? Like, why did they spell it T-U-I-T? They're like, you got to stick. And then quotes, to it. Yeah, no, that's that's actually a Southernism where they'll spell it like that. Now, if if okay. these filmmakers didn't have their heads completely up their asses, they would have had him when he does the whole stick to it speech. He would have written it out on the goddamn chalkboard. Yeah, I thought that right. I thought that they just couldn't spell stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> and based on the rest of the movie, I was like, yeah, that tracks. I get it. They're, yeah. they're like, fuck it. He's dys dyslexic. He doesn't know what the hell this says anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> he can't read it. So, and by the way, this is such a little moment, but it's so fucking amazing because, again, we've done 229 movies now at one hour, 27 minutes and 25 seconds or so, a little before, a little bit after. There is a crowd shot of the parade. It is the single worst example of camera work that we have ever seen on this <laughs> show. <laughs> it's amazing we have watched we have literally watched cameramen sneeze and they kept that shot this was worse <laughs> okay so what what i think is happening and i truly i gotta say spiritually i have no idea what happened to the camera in this okay scene. Can, can i can i throw out a, a fucking theory oh please please do <laughs> they let the guy that this movie was based on film one scene Excellent. <laughs> yes, that that is possible. I assume that this drone was moving sideways and hit someone. That is the only <laughs> thing that makes this shot make sense. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And so, yeah, now the way this movie plays this out. So this is the town coming to welcome him home or whatever. But they play it like he doesn't know this. That any of this is going to happen. Right. So he's like an involuntary parade float for these fucking people. And then they literally drag him up to the stage. They don't use the, they don't take the wheelchair out of the car. They drag him up to the stage with no forewarning. And they're like, hey, why don't you do a speech? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I would paralyze everyone who set that shit up. <laughs> Jesus. And then, of course, all the named characters have a little something to say at this moment. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they they like completely and deeply fail. And at all of their speeches, the fireman guy, he grabs, he snatches the microphone like he's got something to say. And he's just like, yep, we're all uh, spoo, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Leave your wife for me. All right, yes. someone else. Sir. <laughs> Good, bad biker guy. What do you have to say? <laughs> I stopped selling meth for children for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they bought him a van. So the town bought him a van, too. Mm -hmm. So, OK, one final scene to make it through. Obviously, we're at a wedding. We know. No, what's going to happen? Yeah. So he's getting ready for the wedding and he turns to his wife and he's like, you know, Seems odd that I wouldn't have mentioned this, but in the very opening of this movie, we had a VO of like kind of somebody trying to do an Optimus Prime impression uh, that was God. And we haven't acknowledged that, which seems weird. Anyway, that happened. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what I wanted to tell you? Uh, Cummerbunds, flowers. I spoke to God once. All right, let's get out there. <laughs> well, and, and, and again, this is one of those. This is how it happened. Things, so that's how we have to put it in this movie. This is him deciding later. That, A, I should tell people I spoke to God that night, and then this becomes miraculous. Right? Right. Yep. So, and also, by the way, so he he's going to walk the fucking daughter-in-law down the aisle and shit, and like, hey, man, way to make her wedding about you. That's exactly <laughs> what I wrote First as thing well. I thought of, I'm like... <laughs> So my daughter and I said at the same time, we're like, we're like, fucking, nice, nice way to take the spotlight away from the bride, you dick. Yeah, just use the wheel. Even if you don't really need the wheelchair at this point, use it for this one moment. Right. Also, cheating. Canes are totally cheating. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the other thing. The, the fucking movie, like, okay, so the IMDB thing sells this. The, the tagline is, you know, this man was paralyzed, but overcame it and walked again through sheer will. But like, 
that's that's not exactly walking that he's doing there. Right. He's got four legs when, when you add in the crutches. Yeah, and, and, and they're not just like crutches. He's got like the full, like the crutches that go up your arm. Like yeah, the crutches the you have that you've got like cerebral yeah. palsy, like ones where you cannot stand on your own. The, all of the weight is being supported on the arms. Yeah, right. And look, you know, if this is the story of one man's perseverance, sure, worthy of celebration. But if this is God miracling you back to life, this is pretty half ass. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fucking, he's trying to get down the aisle. Poor pianist has to start over on Here Comes the Bride. He's like, I'm, I'm out of shit, guys. <laughs> guys, I'm literally playing Pachelbel Cannon, which is a cannon that you can repeat over and over again. <laughs> and I am somehow out of music. <laughs> Jesus. Although the first thing I thought, I'm like, one, he, 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 he was one year of rehab to struggle with crutches. And then I thought to myself, well, that's not the first time religious people struggle with crutches. <laughs> God, I'll tell you what, if you look at his condition as a metaphor for the Christian religion, you know, starting mm -hmm. in about 900 a CE or so, this movie makes a ton of sense. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> All right. Way deeper than what they were going for. Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. So, okay, real quick before we wrap it up, though, the movie has its own little breakfast club close where it comes up and it's like it's like one year after he was kicked, he got out of his wheelchair and he hasn't needed it since he retired, retired from the police department. <laughs> yeah, and now he's a minister because you s need no abilities to do that job because <laughs> there's nothing you can do to lack qualifications as a minister. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, and I love I love his his sermons are probably like, look, you can do anything with God, and of course, you know, science in a year of rehab and and lots, lots of lots doctors and medicine and pain care. Crutches. But look, I was kicked in the head a year ago, and I busted my ass, and all these people helped me, and the entire community came together, and I can hobble slightly now with crutches. <laughs> God is Welcome great. to the full. God is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be the worst sermon ever. All of his sermons are just him hobbling back and forth on stage and then ending with, need I say more? Oh, oh, I do. I do need to say more. <laughs> so and, and, and by the way, can someone help me up? Yeah. <laughs> well, miracles were a lot easier when there weren't cameras. Fuck you guys. Yeah, no shit. They were so much more impressive back then. All right. Well, Ian, I cannot thank you enough for suffering alongside us this week. If our listeners would like to hear some more from you, where can they go to check out some of your stand up? Well, you can. I have a, a couple TV specials. One's called Extraordinary. It's on Amazon Prime and uh, all the other VOD stuff you watch. But uh, Prime, it's free. And I have another one called Critical and Thinking that is on iTunes. And it's now on my I just made it public on my YouTube page. So um, you can find my YouTube's easy to find. It's uh, it, just look me up. Ian Harris, comedian Ian Harris. And um, yeah, just subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, and and find me on on the social mediums. I'm on all of them, so I'm easy to find. I'm a bald guy who uh, does comedy and 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 uh, it's a bunch of weird sciency type pictures. So I'm I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> well, and I will say to 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 our audience specifically, like check out Ian's shit. Like we're in a world where increasingly comedians are more and more wooey and full of shit. Like his shit is is very like it it, it won't trigger the skeptic in you. It, it it really comes from a skeptical perspective. It's really funny stuff. And of course, thank we'll you. have uh, the YouTube channel linked on the show notes for this episode as well. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It was this is really fun. And uh, can I just say one thing really quickly? Uh, I learned from this experience. To never, ever, ever trust the 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 user ratings on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the user rating on this one? It, it had a five star. Oh, you're <laughs> shitting me! <laughs> no, but but he, he, here's here's something I found out. Um, and, and this is I'm not trying to like go like oh Mac people are better or whatever. But if you look at the ratings on IMDb or on iTunes, which are industry related people, they're People, you know, iTunes, you probably have to have a Mac. So it's probably, again, some sort of, you know, maybe you've got a little bit more money to spend on a nice computer. I don't know. And then Amazon, which is kind of like everybody in the world that can just kind of tune on to Amazon. <laughs> it's always diametrically opposed. If it's five is it? stars, on not always, but for the most part, if it's five stars on Amazon, it'll be one star on iTunes. <laughs> or IMDb will be like a 3.7. Great movie. Anyway, so I learned a lot. I watched I five stars. This must be what the fuck? So. 
All right, so audience, you have a mission there. Make sure that Ian's shit is at least higher in the stars than this fucking movie. I was Whether say, you're giving yeah. him high ratings or this one low ratings or a combination of the two, let's fucking make that happen at least. For the- <laughs> he suffered for your entertainment. Yes, just like Jesus. So that's going to do it for our review of Badge of Faith. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to double down on this bet. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Star Trek Five. Oh no! It's Star Trek meets God. Everybody, yeah. get ready! Oh God, we've been getting so many requests for that for so fucking long. I'm so glad. Ooh, maybe we'll be able to get a special guest Trekkie. That'll be great. Ooh, if only we knew someone who liked Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Our community is so barren. <laughs> All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 229 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Ian for hanging out with us tonight. Again, check the show notes to hear more from him. And a perhaps even a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors who help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Rat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of People's Drafts on Mars, although the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Preach went on to annoy the fuck out of his family by moving way slower and less safely than he would if he just used the damn wheelchair like the doctors told him to. Washington completed his training in this movie to matter in the next film he's in. Someday. The wife divorced him because he's an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) He could eventually sign the paper. She's like, you know what? I'm cashing (laughs) in. That was my challenge. You got me. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.